Does that show on your screens that I'm yeah, recording? It does. It, yeah. it says recording. Oh my God, I've done it right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you everyone for joining us this evening. And um, as I explained, I kind of just wanted to explore a little bit about being a woman in cycling and what it means, if it means anything, whether our gender matters at all. I personally, for me, in my experience, feel it has done um, for different reasons, whether it be the fact that certainly when I started out as a journalist, I was still a rarity in the press pack, or whether it was because I kind of like to dress as a woman and that's led to judgment as to my intellect or experience or why I'm in the sport. Um, but I really want to hear from all of you and whether you think your gender has been a factor. Fran, we've discussed this before and yes. I may have misremembered our conversation, but I feel like you had said to me that you didn't think gender was such a big deal. I don't think it's impacted my opportunities uh, for sure, but I think it's impacted what I've been able to do in my career because it gives me a different point of view. So I think I have... Uh, being a woman in the, a sport that is very male dominated and where, you know, the primary focus is on the men's side of the sport wrongly, but there, there it is. I think I, I can bring something different to the table that men don't tend to bring. So do you think what it, it's been maybe a bit of an advantage at times? Yeah. Massive advantage at times. Yeah. Massive advantage at times. Um, you know, I, you know, I know it's a bit cliche to say that women have more emotional intelligence, more empathy, softer, but ultimately I think there is an element of truth in that, particularly in a leadership and, and, you know, management position. And, you know, I think that's something that I've really strived to maintain and build and grow, particularly in a team environment that it should feel, you know, as close to a familial relationship as you can have with a, in a professional environment and equally that people feel some sense of psychological safety and I think you know in as a female in a, in a male world I'm able to bring that simply because the perception is I am a woman and I'm softer and etc and whether that's the truth for all women is to be debated but for me it certainly has had a big impact. Lizzie but, what about you obviously you're surrounded by women in women's teams but you're still in a sport where men mostly run the teams men are the mechanics they're behind the scenes still mostly in the press pack what has your gender meant to you in your career? I think it's definitely changed over the years. I think it's it's been very different in um, from starting out as a junior. Definitely experienced massive inequalities um, because I think at that level, at GB level, um, it's about Olympic medals. And I was, you know, as a track rider, and we're we're all going for the same thing. And I think I had the equal ability to achieve as my counterpart male did as a junior. And it was very different back then. The support was not equal at all. I think there's been a massive shift and I think it is now. I don't think it in any way would hold a junior female back in the UK, which is brilliant. Um, and then, yeah, there's been <laughs> so many different experiences where yeah, I'm, I, I, I definitely feel my my gender in, is being important in my career. Yeah, it's had a huge impact. Can you explain uh, or, go, or think of any examples as to, to when or in what way? The, yeah, so many. Gosh, <laughs> I should have. Uh, um, I mean, it, it's, it's hard to quantify. Like, we are, I am racing in a male-dominated sport, and so often I have to put myself into a political position. I, most male athletes do have to have a political standpoint on something. That's part of being a professional athlete these days. But I've almost had to become a political advocate for my sex rather than just be able to be a cyclist, um, which you kind of have to grow into that role. Um, and I don't think potentially, you know, my male counterpart has had, to, has had those same pressures. Yeah, I've said that to you before. I remember once we were sitting in Harrogate doing an interview, I think it was. Um, and I remember saying that I felt like you almost didn't have a choice in your career as to whether you were going to be a spokesperson for certain issues. Do you feel like if you had been a guy, you could have just gotten on with riding your bike and maybe preferred that? Or are you quite happy that you find this position in a way? 
Uh, I think I'm I'm happy with it, yeah, because somebody has to, right? But I also think that male cyclists have to uh, commentate on political issues. It, they're often asked about doping, for instance. I'm only asked about equality, which is probably an easier subject. <laughs> so, you know, um, I think as the better you get as an athlete, that kind of responsibility for becoming a spokesperson happens. But I think it's it's clear that there is an inequality in our sport otherwise I wouldn't be asked constantly about it you know and what about you Monica your father founded your business the Santini business so in a way you were always following in the footsteps of a man coming into it but at the same time it's a a female dominated company certainly at the top structure you and and your sister uh, run it essentially what has your gender meant to you in your corner of sideline well, you know, listening to what uh, uh, the other girls were saying, I felt like uh, I wasn't just, uh, you know, uh, a female in a male-dominated uh, sport or, or industry. I also was uh, this, the daughter of a man <laughs> that did something. So I added to that the fact that, you know, I had to prove, 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 prove all the time something. So not only that you're female and capable, but also that you are the daughter or somebody and you're capable. So I, I think that, uh, I, I honestly have to say that like Fran, I never felt that my gender was uh, an obstacle, but uh, uh, for sure, I have to say that it was so, such a hard work all the time. Nothing came uh, easily. Everything came uh, for hard work uh, to, you know, you had to be prepared all the time, uh, uh, spent hours and hours more than any other man probably had to do. So now after, well, it's a long time, how many years that I've been, uh, uh, you know, working and running the company, uh, we we actually, uh, I, we probably have now a company that is the total opposite. So as you, as you mentioned, it's uh, owned by women and run by women most of the time. Our, we have probably 90% of female uh, okay. personnel inside, yes. And, uh, you know, all the fact that we are so many women inside a company uh, makes it different in many ways, uh, not better or worse, different for sure. Uh, we, I can say that uh, it's uh, an environment that is very, uh, very positive, very energetic, uh, where we have, we try to understand the needs of each other because we are all female. A lot of us are mothers. A lot of us, uh, you know, are caring for somebody. And uh, uh, so what I try to, to do in, in the work environment is to uh, be flexible, to understand the needs of the other women working with me. And I see that that gives us a super advantage because uh, the more you're flexible and the more that these fantastic women gives back. I'm curious what you say about having to prove yourself over and over again. And it's something that I feel even though yeah, in my same. career that no one ever, ever comes to me assuming an experience and an expertise. A guy will always explain to me uh, what's happening or what races he's been to or always assume that I'm there for another reason other than what I'm actually good at. But I'm always grateful for it when I I grip my teeth and get on with it and I'm annoyed (laughs) to begin with, but I just think, fine, fine, here we go again, here we go again. I'm gonna raise my game, I'm gonna raise the bar yet again. And I find it can be quite a positive fuel in a way and Fran, you were nodding your head there when Monica was was talking. Just because I think, because I was, you know, da- I was David Miller's little sister for eighty five percent of my career, which came with all of the, you know, benefits of that, and then an awful lot of drawbacks of that as well. You know, you know say the doping question is, you know, we all know David's background, so I can definitely relate to having to prove yourself. And I also think it's just a natural, women much more naturally feel they have to be subject matter specialists, feel they have to be experts, feel they have to be deep in their lane. Men men just don't have, there's, there's a brilliant, um, actually Christina from uh, Brompton recommended, the marketing director at Brompton recommended a book to me called How Women Rise. And it was a, it was a management book that was written by um, a, a guys about leadership. 
and they they wrote it it was hugely successful but then loads of women wrote to them and said um we're not facing the same problems and so they then wrote the book from a female point of view having speak, spoken to loads of female leaders and what a what a huge amount of the female leaders said was unlike men where they're happy to be generalists they're happy to not be perfection like to have perfection women hold themselves back because they feel they have to be excellent they have to be subject matter specialist they have to be perfect they have to be able to answer every question and actually no man does that it's a very female trait it makes us excellent those of us who are willing to do it but it also holds us back because no one expects that right except ourselves well, that's what I was going to ask. Why do we do it then? Is it that we put the pressure on ourselves or is it we know, Monica kind of alluded to it there, is it we know we'll be shot down if there is the slightest error because it will be a case of, well, I knew she was only there because of that. It feels a little bit sometimes that uh, it, it is they are like looking at you from the outside, waiting for you to make that mistake and then say, you know, we were expecting that. And so that's probably why uh, you normally women in in, in strong positions uh, have that pressure internally to always be ready, prepared, and uh, you know to be to know a lot of the things that you're talking about. Uh, while as friend was saying, most of the time men just talk about things without really knowing <laughs> yeah. it about anything. Without being right so, necessarily. Exactly. So. <laughs> But because nobody expects them to, you know, to, to say the right thing all the time. Uh, so I don't know. I, I felt that most of my life, so even when I was in school, I felt that I had to, you know, study everything until the last word. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I wouldn't be ready for the interrogation or for, you know, this kind of things. And, and uh, yeah, it, as you as you were saying, Ola, it, it helps a lot, I think, to fuel you, to give you that energy that, uh, you know, once they told me that I have a super strong engine, they told me that. I was like, whoop, okay, I, I like that. Uh, so you've got an engine. Oh, my God, you're never tired. How do you, you feel like? And I think that's part of, uh, you know, being a mother, being running a company and, uh, you know, but at the same time trying to be a nice wife and, uh, you know, having some friends, doing sports. And, you know, if you calculate everything in the end, you're like, oh, my God. <laughs> so, but, but it's, it's, uh, it, it feels always that uh, you cannot leave out any part of that of your life because you will be missing something. So yeah, you need the, a strong engine all the time. And uh, like, uh, I don't know, you're one of those big trucks. <laughs> no, I was gonna say, I'd be fascinated to know Monica, now that you run a business that's led by women, predominantly populated by women, whether the younger women in your organization feel those same pressures because it definitely is a male thing like as a woman in a male dominated industry you do feel that you know that i'm going to prove you wrong i'm going to i will be a subject matter specialist i will be i'm not going to give you room to criticize whereas i i don't think i'd feel that if i was in a female dominated environment because i think there is more uh, room for people to make mistakes recognize that in in error comes growth and all those kinds of things oh, it'd be really interesting to know if you feel the younger team the younger female team in your organization maybe are having a different experience because you know monica you and i aren't far apart in age and so the, the experience you and i had is probably <laughs> quite similar and whether or not you know the 20 year olds coming through industry now are feeling the same pressures might be quite different i don't know i would like to ask that question to the many many young girls that are working with me but i hope that what they they feel working with me or working within my organization is that they can actually express themselves uh, mm -hmm. freely. That's already something because expressing yourself means that also you're putting yourself out. And uh, I mean, you can, you can say something wrong, you can say something stupid sometimes, uh, but I, I hope that they feel that uh, what I expect from them is that they learn uh, stuff. So uh, of course, as, as you always uh, they say, what they say in organization, at least it's an Italian saying, is that the, you know, the, uh, the army has the pace of the general. So um, probably if they look at me the way I do things, they will probably feel uh, uh, you know, compelled to you know, be ready or prepared in any case. But <laughs> I hope it is in a good way, in a, in a way that they feel comfortable with. So uh, I honestly, 
always tell them that uh, there are no stupid questions. There are only questions. And what I expect them for, from them is that so they don't come with a problem, but with already a solution. And I might, it might be a wrong solution, but they have at least thought about it, so even no matter what, what the level it is. So we, we work a lot on this kind of environment internally on, uh, you know, having a lot of uh, groups, uh, uh, mixed groups, uh, because I like to, you know, have people from different areas to mix up because I hate that. We and them, I yeah. hate that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, I don't know. I hope it's a positive environment, uh, but I, I'll ask Ren. I'll ask uh, what they feel, uh, uh, my, my younger employees. I'm pretty sure it is a positive environment because listening to you, I want to come and work for you. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> can, you, can, you let it, can you connect on LinkedIn? I'm going to look out for a job. <laughs> Lizzie, you've worked a lot with Monica, actually, haven't you? Because you've designed collections with her. Do you find yeah. a difference working with... Um, females in positions of power compared to men in positions of power and and I guess a lot of the men that you work with are steeped in the tradition of cycling which is a very male I mean it's a very specific brand of male um, attitude <laughs> I find uh, do you find I, a difference working with with men and with women I think um Definitely when I was pregnant, there was a huge difference in when I told people that I was pregnant and the nicest reaction that I got was from Santini. Oh. They, said, they said, yeah, they said congratulations. And it was the first time anybody had said congratulations. And what it almost- What did say? <sighs> you don't want to know. <laughs> I do. <laughs> no, uh, it wasn't good. And um, I, it made me very emotional to have that kind of support and just for people to just be happy for me. I, you know, I, I'd got to a position where I almost felt like I needed to apologize. And um, it was really refreshing to be congratulated and be like, OK, that's exciting. What are we going to do for the, this next nine months, you know? Um, and maybe that is just about having a bit more of an open mind and flexible attitude, like Monica was saying, that they have, you know? And maybe that does come from being working around females. I don't know. If you were pregnant and you know that what it feels like, the first thing that comes to your mind is that, you know, congratulate. I mean, it's a, a beautiful thing. It's it's something that is magical. And so it, it, both me and Paula, my sister, we, we already had kids. And, and when Lizzie said so, it was, I think it was actually a very strong uh, uh, and, and, uh, um, I don't know, you, you, you I think that Lizzie had a, an incredible courage to do that and to, mm -hmm. you know, to in a top of, uh, a, a, a top of, uh, of the moment of her career to have a kid and then coming back. I remember that we talked about a lot with Lizzie on the fact that she wanted to be back and she wanted to be strong again. And, uh, you know, and I, and I think that that, uh, that decision took a lot of courage. So, um, and it was a natural thing for us to back her up uh, because, I mean, if, yeah. if, if women don't do that, who, who can? Reminding myself now when you announced that you were pregnant and, and it was a big deal in the sport, but at the same time, I, I guess I just assumed that, that the people you work with, the people you're surrounded by, the partnerships that you have, would be incredibly supportive of something that's much bigger than your career, that's much bigger than your sport. I mean, I had a conversation with the girls on the team about pregnancy. And um, so from my perspective, it was completely my decision, my unfil, <laughs> our decision <laughs> he to got start a, a family. <laughs> a little bit he's a little yeah, bit. A little bit. So. <laughs> we'll not dwell on his part. <laughs> But, you know, there was there was no consideration to me of when the fact, OK, I am part of a team, but I am also a human and I'm allowed to make these personal decisions. And even still having conversations with some of the women on my team, they see it as a betrayal of your contract because you knowingly get pregnant whilst you have a contract. And I was kind of saying to them, I think you're naive and you have to realize that actually this is business and your employer will not give you the same sort of loyalty back you know it, it, you have to make oh I totally understand that a team is important but 
you have to be able to be a human too and make human decisions. And I don't think a man in my sport would think he's betraying his team by starting a family. Um, (laughs) And that was definitely the uh, reaction I had from a lot of people. And I found it incredible how many people thought it was okay to ask me if it was, if all was planned. Many, many journalists asked me. (laughs) I was like, you know, just... Yeah, plenty of journalists ask me in a roundabout way, you know. And yet, and yet, to be positive, things have changed so much in women's cycling in the last, like, four or five years. It is phenomenal. At the rate of change and the pace of change, where do you see things in, like, four or five years' time? It's been an incredible 10 years for women's cycling. Um, And I think it's, it's really important that the changes that are made are sustainable, so sometimes it can be frustrating when you're interviewed and usually it's at the Tour de France, it's at La Course, <laughs> um, where the big headlines are made. And it's really frustrating because it's like women's cycling has been going on all year. And then you come to the Tour de France and you say, why isn't there a women's Tour de France? Well, it's France and nobody's talking about the amazing La Course that we've just seen. Yeah, exactly. And it's really frustrating. Um, because right now, until until for things like the min- women's women minimum wage which has now come in you know and has had a huge impact in just two years you see the depth in the sport has changed massively women are you know doing a second job so that means that they are able to compete at a decent level and that the 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 performances is crazy now like we are capable of doing a three-week tour de france but only just you know only just have we got enough women who are earning a decent amount of money to train properly in order to do a Tour de France so it's hard in my position to say at La Course no we're not ready for a women's Tour de France because straight away they'll jump on it and say see see they're not ready and you yeah, have yeah, to yeah. Leave them to it. yeah you almost have to buy into these exaggerated headlines because in my position I have no choice because I believe in equality and I believe there should be a women's sort of France but there's so many levels of sustainable change underneath it but you know you can't get that across in in an interview when you've just finished 140 kilometer bike race but you're expected to and that's that's difficult so what's the game changer ladies uh, in cycling in the world we're gonna we're gonna resolve it now right <laughs> right here tonight how does the world become more equal and what does it look like is it about trying to foster more a more friendly environment for women to thrive and to succeed at the very top level is it about societal change when it comes to division of of parental labor and division of domestic labor which you know 70 percent, i think it is of of unpaid work in the world is still carried out by women where where does equality come from essentially well i think that in in cycling for sure what lizzie was saying uh, is true i mean you need to uh, to grow the 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 female side of the sport uh, to be able to compete uh, at certain level i at the other on the other hand uh I don't see that happening if you don't have uh, big events uh, and probably televised big events, because of course we all know that uh, you know money comes from uh, you know being broadcasted and uh, you know being on television. And if you're not on television, you don't get sponsors, and if you don't get sponsors, you don't get money, and the athletes cannot get money. So I think it, it's a complicated thing. And uh, sometimes you probably need to, you know, just jump in, even if you're not so ready, as Lizzie was absolutely saying, and, uh, you know, save the chance uh, so that that chance will uh, improve again in the next year and then then again and then again. So at the same, I can say the same. I think that in the last 10 years, the, the changes that I've seen in female cycling is, have been amazing, amazing. I remember that uh, uh, I, we started uh, to have a women collection 20 years ago and we were probably selling like 10 pieces. And mm-hmm. at the beginning, the, uh, p- women even said to us that they prefer to buy the men's pieces because they were better. And we were like, what? I mean, we spend money and ideas on that and then and 
And now it's totally the opposite. I mean, everybody is looking for something that is specifically done for, for you know, the female body. So once again, I think that you sometimes need to you jump in, even if it's not so economically convenient. But if you want to prove your point, I mean, it's something that starts, uh, uh, you know, that wheel and, and then it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. Lizzie, what about you then? Equality, what does it look like in your, in your corner? I think it's societal, um, mainly. I, it comes; it's a reflection of the society. I, even I miss kind of casual sexism happening in my everyday life, and I think you know things like at La Course, I won a watch, which you know, lovely, but it's a man's watch, and I didn't what? even realise you yeah. won a man's watch. <laughs> yeah, I thought, oh, this is all right. I'll give it to Phil, and Phil was like. You won a man's watch at a woman's bike race. I was like, yeah, that's bad, isn't it? You know, but, but that shows that yeah. still casual sexism happens all the time. And you and still might say that you didn't even remark no, on it. I mean, I had just done a bike race, so I was a bit tired, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and um, yeah, it's about kind of questioning sometimes am I in this position because I'm a woman or not and you know challenging it and 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 sometimes I think it is easy as a woman Uh, I realize from some of the conversations I've had with my teammates about maternity leave and maternity clauses etc um you have to you have to push the women around you I think Mm -hmm. to fight for more equality and to understand sexism that is happening to them and they, they maybe don't even realize it and I think yeah it's about building up other women around you I think 100% I 100% agree with that and you can understand why lots of women get to a certain age in a certain stage where it just becomes bloody tiring you know it's exhausting and it's also exhausting like I I find that I I gravitate more and more to very strong women, you know, and that's obviously where I feel most at home. But then I notice that when we're together, we're even more strident. And then the men folk in our lives almost find it funny when when you're saying, because then it becomes something of a cliche. It's like, oh, can you not give that a rest? Well, well no, because because society doesn't give it a rest. Give me a break yeah. and then we can stop yeah. going When the patriarchy it. rests, we will rest. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. You know, just listening to you all as well, I feel like so often we are told it's a man's world and so we have to fit into that and we fit into those parameters. And I often wonder what things would be like if we just ignored that, if we just actually talked to each other more and accepted our reality as being reality as much as the men's version. So mm-hmm. so it's been, it's been wonderful talking to you all. I've loved it. I've really loved it. I've been looking forward to this so much and I'm really good. At, I'm really glad it was as much fun as I wanted it to be. <laughs> thank you. Thank you Thanks, all. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Keep thank picking you. ass. <laughs>